We just saw the Gray Man, and wow, it was a non-stop action-filled adventure that really kept us on the edge of our seats. James Bond meets Fast and Furious, baby! It took everything we love about action films and cranked it up to 11. Now listen, we have heavy spoilers ahead, so please, for the love of all things action-packed, you have been warned. The Gray Man follows secret agent Sierra Six. Throw in your best Nikki Six joke here. He's played by the fantastic Ryan Goslin as the CIA's most skilled mercenary. He was let out of jail after the murder of his father. It was justified, I promise you. He was then hired by the CIA to become an assassin. Years after his hiring date, he is on a deadly mission in Bangkok where he discovers dark secrets about the CIA and then collects a USB drive of all those secrets. After it is uncovered that Six has learned those dark secrets and has possession of the USB drive, he becomes the primary target and is hunted around the world by the very handsome psychopathic former colleague Lloyd Hansen, played by Chris Evans, and hundreds of other international assassins. There's a lot going on in this movie, to a save the girl subplot, movie tropes, and callbacks to other movies and entertainment. Let's take a look at 25 things you might have missed in The Gray Man. I'm Joey C. Uh, let's go. Netflix is not afraid of shelling out an insane amount of money to projects they believe in. The Gray Man marks the most expensive Netflix original movie, tied with the 2021 classic Red Notice, starring Ryan Reynolds and The Rock. The budget for both movies was $200 million, which sounds insane, but just imagine how much it is to blow up a car and multiply that by 100, plus all the buildings they had to blow up for this project. It adds up quick, man. The film is just a constant series of incredible, how can you possibly top that scenes, and guess what? Each scene gets crazier and crazier. Chris Evans, Captain America, America's ass himself plays the main villain Lloyd Hansen, and he does a wonderful evil job. We were shocked to actually find out that he was originally considered for the lead role of Sierra Six, now played by Ryan Gosling. And it was rather interesting to find out he also originally declined to play the villain of the movie. Now you're probably asking yourself, hey Joey C, what changed man? And to you I would say, I have no idea. I couldn't find an answer for you, so I'm just gonna lie. Chris Evans stated that his grandmother changed his mind and said he would be a wonderful bad guy. On another interesting note, we found out that Ryan Gosling had previously turned on Marvel and DC comic film deals. Side note, DC Comics is technically Detective Comics Comics. Anyways, The Gray Man marks the ravishing Ryan Gosling's first ever multiple film franchise role. More on that later. Although, there are rumors floating around the internet of him playing Ghost Rider in the MCU, and that would be awesome. One of my favorite little details I love to hear about in movies is injuries on set, which makes me sound like an absolute psychopath. For example, Pierce Brosnan broke his hand in the beginning of the filming of Goldeneye, and they had to tape his hand to the gun he was holding because it was injured. Back to the Gray Man, we found out that Chris Evans actually hit Ryan Gosling in the face with his prop gun on the first day of shooting, and that actually cracks me up. Was it a random act of violence? Was it jealousy? Or was it an accident? The world may never know. Ryan Gosling, like any stud, always makes deals when he can. Recently, he struck a partnership with one of the world's most fashionable watch companies, Tag Heuer. Ryan Gosling has been spotted wearing these watches everywhere he goes, so it was no surprise to see every single character in The Gray Man also wears these watches. A very sneaky product placement. They go well with the Skittles and Audi brands that can be seen throughout the movie. Anna de Armas is no stranger to action films, as she played a Bond girl in the James Bond classic, No Time to Die. More on that later. But also shared the screen with Chris Evans and Knives Out. Also more on that later. The Cuban and Spanish actress is really making her mark. She worked with Ryan Gosling on 2017's Blade Runner 2049. And additionally, she will be collabing with Chris Evans again in Ghosted, the up and coming movie that is described as quote, plot under wraps. The chemistry Anna and the boys share on screen makes sense considering she is no stranger to these handsome boys. When the movie was first announced, more on that later. Brad Pitt was originally attached as the lead of Sierra Six, and James Gray was set to direct. The Gray Man himself 
was set to direct The Gray Man. What a missed opportunity. Years after this was announced, in October of 2015, Brad Pitt and James Gray were no longer involved with the film. It would have been an entirely different movie if Brad Pitt took up the mantle as six, but we think Ryan Gosling's stone face expressions throughout the crazy action sequences is a great fit. The Indian actor, producer, and director Danush is quite the talented individual, and seeing him involved with this project really tied it all together for us. While he was in the middle of filming The Gray Man, on set he learned that he won his second national award for Best Actor, which is the Indian equivalent of an Oscar, for his legendary performance in the 2019's classic, Asuran. Altogether, the film won 34 awards across the world, including Best Actor, Best Movie, Best Director, the list goes on and on. Chris Evans and the Russo brothers have had a wonderful and successful history together. The Wonderful Gray Man marks the first project between the two parties since the 2019 classic Avengers Endgame. Chris Evans has had a history of being the good guy in most projects besides Knives Out, but this film also marks the first project where he plays a villain in a project by the Russo brothers. All their previous projects, Crazy Chris was the hero, like in The Winter Soldier, Civil War, Infinity War, and in Endgame. One of the wildest pieces of news of 2022 was the leaked photos of Ryan Gosling on the set of the new live-action Barbie movie where he plays Kendall. Really didn't have that one on my 2022 bingo card, but uh, anyways... During one of the major action sequences in the movie, Lloyd Hansen at one point refers to Sierra Six, aka Ryan Gosling, as a Ken doll. You see the connection here, man. I don't have to spell it out for you. Very cute, a very cool. The Gray Man reunites directors Anthony and Joe Russo with the screenwriter duo Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely for the first time since their work on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They worked on classic films such as Captain America, The Winter Soldier, Civil War, and Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. They are the dream team, and we can see very similar themes of action, heroism, and comedy sprinkled into all these projects. And speaking of Captain America Civil War and the Winter Soldier, Callan Mulvey, who played Dining Car, odd name I suppose, starred in Winter Soldier alongside Chris Evans. There he played the fantastic Jack Rollins. Alfred Woodard, who played Maurice Cahill in The Gray Man, also previously starred in Captain America Civil War with Chris Evans, where she played the beautiful Miriam. Speaking of a connection to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, in The Gray Man, Susanna Brewer asks Lloyd Hansen, Chris Evans, how he can consider such a messy situation of murder, explosions, and mayhem such a success. To which he responds with, quote, I consider success a success. This is a very similar exchange as in Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely's previous movie, Avengers Affinity War, where thick boy Thanos himself asks Loki if he considers failure experience, to which he responds with, quote, I consider experience experience. I consider experience experience. A wonderful callback to a project that is very close to the creators of this movie. Let's continue the trend of nice and short entries, man. Surprisingly, The Gray Man has a PG-13 rating, which is wild to us because the movie is filled with violence, explosions, and torture scenes. And the big D, death, man. The original script intended the movie to be R-rated, but Netflix urged the creators to dial it back to a PG-13 rating to appeal to a larger market. Business-wise, I guess that makes the most sense, but we don't care about that, man. We want action, baby! Let's dive a bit into the similarities between The Gray Man and the James Bond classic movies that preceded it. The focus on big guns, fast cars, chase scenes, rogue agents that are being hunted down, Bond girls, quirky sidekicks, noble hero moments are all present themes in both movies. The Gray Man really gives us new age James Bond Daniel Craig vibes and we really dig it. While there weren't any Bond gadgets in the movie, the aforementioned themes are all there. The most interesting tidbits of information we love to know from the directors is what were their inspirations for the movie. Joe Russo, 50% of the director brothers, said that their jumping off points were Die Hard and Lethal Weapon classic 80s action movies. He went on to say John McTiernan's films of the 80s were a big part of the inspiration, movies that embraced humor and action. Joe also went on to say that he thinks of The Gray Man as a comedy, a dark comedy. 
I, I mean, I guess if you want, Joe, sure. The film Bullet was credited as teaching the directors a lot about sound design and how valuable sound design is to a car chase scene. Also, he mentioned to live and die in L.A. Chaos and action, baby. In that same interview NBC had with Joe Russo, Russo explained that they rented out an entire square in Prague for six weeks in the middle of summer. It was really interesting to learn that the square that we saw in the movie that was ultimately destroyed is all just grass in real life. They had to build everything we saw in the movie, like the benches, the massive fountain, they built a two-way tram track system. All the concrete structures that fill the square were just there for the movie. He went on to say that they had over a thousand people shooting on that sequence alone. Good lord, no wonder this movie had a $200 million budget. It all went to the square, man! We thought for sure going into this movie there was going to be a post credit scene, considering the creators of this film have huge ties with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, who are famous for end credit scenes. We are very, very sad to report that there wasn't one. But the end title sequence with the 3D rendered models of the characters throughout the movie were inspired directly from the MCU and very similar to something you would see in the MCU, like Winter Soldier and Civil War. And the directors and the graphic designers of the film said that that was their motivation for the final title sequence. So it is no secret that The Gray Man is based on the novel The Gray Man, which was released in 2009 by Mark Greeny. Well, with the talks of The Gray Man becoming a film franchise, we were shocked to hear that there are 10 sequels to the book jam-packed with sequel material for a new movie. And there's another one coming in 2023. The opportunities are endless for material, and the lore seems to run deep enough to warrant 11 sequels. Luckily, the Russo brothers have gone on record to say that they hope to expand this film into a full-blown Gray Man universe. The Gray Man and MCU's Chris Evans is no stranger to style, let me tell ya. In the movie, he rocks an amazing stash that really captivates us. In the 2019 classic Who Done It movie, Knives Out, Chris Evans plays a rich boy whose sweaters took over the meme world for a while. Come to find out, he brings that sweater style back as a wonderful callback to his previous style. Was it intentional? Probably not, but still fun to compare the two movies. And all I'm saying is the sweater and stash combo is a power move. Although the stash isn't present and knives out, the sweater is enough. We may be stretching it a bit on this one, but who cares, man? We're just having fun here. The Gray Man features a gruesome torture scene where we can see Chris Evans take a pair of pliers to Billy Bob Thornton's fingernails and rip them off one by one until he gets the information he wants. It was very gross to watch, let me tell you. This scene may be a callback to another action classic, American Assassin, the 2017 classic starring Batman himself, Michael Keaton. In this movie, we see Ghost grip Hurley's nails with a pair of pliers, dragging each nail from its bed, which is so insanely gross and very similar to the scene in The Gray Man. Is it a callback? Probably not, but I'm in charge here, man. Back to the topic of the novel that was released in 2009, in 2011 it was announced that Hollywood was going to adapt the novel into a film with Brad Pitt, like we mentioned before. Later it was changed to Charlize Thurlon as the director and an all-woman cast, although neither one came to fruition. The property lingered in developmental hell until July of 2020, where it was announced that the Russo brothers would direct the film with Gosling and Evans attached to it. They finally began shooting in March of 2021 and wrapped in July. So with an 11 year production, it's safe to say that this movie was long overdue and we're just glad it finally came out. Lloyd Hansen must have taken some inspiration from Iron Man himself because at one point in the movie, Chris Evans says the line, if you wanna make an omelet, you gotta kill some people. While that sounds like a great line from any villain, it's actually a callback to Captain America Civil War where Tony Stark is giving a speech and says the line, Go break some eggs. I love movie mistakes, so let's go over a small one that really tickles me. But it's not at all a major mistake, but one nonetheless. In the final showdown of the fountain, we see a mano e mano fist fight between the two stars. There is a moment during the fight that goes from pitch black to mid-sunrise in the space of a few seconds, and I just love spotting those. 
And finally, on the topic of the final sequence, the 1980 classic horror movie The Shining and The Gray Man have something in common. They both have their finale in a hedge maze, with the bad guy stalking the hero. Instead of Jack Nicholson stalking the little Danny boy, we have Chris Evans with his teenage hostage stalking the hero Sneaky Six, with the final fight ending in the maze center. Instead of being froze to death, the bad guy Evans gets shot, stabbed, and shot again. Ah. I love classic tropes like that. Alrighty, everybody, you made it to the end of the video. What did you think of the Gray Man? Did you notice anything that we didn't? If so, let us know in the comments below. And as always, everybody, thanks for watching.